The business coaching class is starting once again. Sign up for our free call. It's March 3rd. Get on with us. Spend an hour and a half where we talk about business, understand the value of it. Come and join us. Sign up today. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Slanted Lands, I've got Pi here from SLR Lounge, fabulous wedding photographer, and I thought it would be interesting to ask him the question, what do you think of what Vogue said, saying you do not need a wedding photographer? They don't need you. I think <laughs> Molly Guy. Molly Guy is the person that wrote the article, and honestly, from a certain perspective, I think she's kind of right, in the sense that you don't, and let me, let me clarify this, you don't need a wedding photographer if she's equating a wedding photographer to what she says in her article, which is basically place disposable cameras on the tables and let your guests take drunken fun pictures with direct flash and disposable image quality and all that kind of stuff. There are all sorts of crazy. If that's, if that's what the wedding photographer is actually creating and it's similar to that kind of a product, then absolutely I would not hire that person. But in my mind, as a wedding photographer, well, wedding photographers, we should be differentiating ourselves and calling ourselves artists. I mean, we are wedding photographers. That's how people find us. But what we're creating is not just that. And by the way, you might enjoy this. I actually went and read the article. So there's a lot of talk about this. So this is the article from, yeah, the Vogue article. From Vogue, yeah. yeah. And so Molly Guy wrote this. And we all know the reason that you write these kind of articles is... To get views. It's get people to come to your page. I mean, it's obvious. Vogue, who is Vogue anyway? I mean, is it a magazine? I don't have a subscription. The, oh, okay. the article no. is titled 10 Things That You Don't Need. Vogue subscription? I've been okay with that one so far. <laughs> I mean, number 11. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kidding. Yeah. But absolutely. anyway. Everyone needs a Vogue subscription, obviously. Yeah. Not. So we don't have yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Molly Guy wrote this article and it's it's obviously designed to get views. I mean, it had 220 comments on it. Yeah. It's been shared everywhere. It it did what it was supposed to do. And if you compare it to other Vogue articles, oh my gosh, it has obliterated them in terms of views yeah. and traffic. Well, all of a sudden everyone's talking about Vogue again, you know, <laughs> which is... <laughs> they do have nice pictures. Oh, they do. There's no doubt about it. Great photography. And I'm sure they come off of drunken tables with disposable cameras. Uh, every commercial shoot, they just give a bunch of cameras out to the crew and a bunch of uh, liquor and let's see what comes out. It's why we have such a hard time recreating their look. Cause... It's really hard to do. So... The thing is that Molly Guy is actually the creative director for Stone Fox Bride. Which, which is another magazine or? It's another website which I believe uh, they feature wedding collections and gowns and all sorts of things, but they have a whole host of <laughs> images that I'm pretty sure were not taken off of a disposable camera off of a drunken yeah, person's yeah. table. In fact, I could even show you, see? Look at these. Oh my. Those are very pretty <laughs> Those are fabulous images, yeah. If they're drunk, then... So what's the point, though? I mean, if there's a point being made there, and is there a point on some level? Is she saying this next generation doesn't care about things being quite as controlled and quite as uh, maybe as staged as maybe wedding photography has been in the past? Is that the point she's trying to make? That maybe they want something that's fresher and more organic and more real? I don't know. Well, personally, I felt like the article, like 10 things you could do without, I felt like the article itself is a little bit of just kind of a slap in the face to culture in general. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it didn't seem like it was, like, you don't need rings. Okay, yeah. I mean, like... <laughs> the culture of weddings. It's yeah. like, let's change this whole, uh, yeah. Like, you don't need a first dance. You don't need anything. Of course, we don't need these things, but if it's part of your culture and it's part of the things that you want to do and it matters to you and it, that's all that should matter is what matters to you. Now, you shouldn't yeah. ever do something, of course, because other people are doing it. We shouldn't be having weddings just to compare and make ours more extravagant than the next person. There was one valid point that I thought Molly made, and that is that for wedding photographers, if the work that we're creating can in any way be comparable to those snapshots that, well, guests are taking from disposable cameras or maybe even from their own DSLRs, if they're bringing their own DSLRs and they're shooting and those images are comparable, then in my mind, well, you have a ways to go in terms of differentiating yourself as a photographer. And there's, there's certain things. In my mind, there's five things that really differentiate somebody. Their ability to pose, to light a scene, to have an artistic vision for where they're trying to go with a composition and create a story with the, the product, and to be able to communicate and to plan. We actually designed an entire course just on communication and planning because those were the two elements, the soft skills that have everything to do with the client's experience 
And then you have the hard skills of photography, which we teach a ton of as well. And you have a lot of amazing tutorials on too. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting in this process because I think what we've done is we've gone from, I came from an era where everything was controlled and very, very staged. And then we went into that era where it was just not staged. It was very organic. It was very just whatever. And now I think we're kind of, and I think her article is kind of late mm -hmm. because we've gone back to, no, I do want to see a nice picture yeah. of myself. I want to see something really creative, really interesting. I want to see something that I'm going to hang on my wall and feel like it's art. We've kind of transcended that whole world. So I think it is a stab at culture. It's a matter of, you know, no more weddings. You know, let's get rid of all these things. And why does culture always have to be such a bad thing? Yeah. You know, why is that? I mean, I think it's a good thing, you know, that we have some place that we've been and some place that we're going to go. I think it's a foundation for people. I think it's a positive thing. So, yeah. The article's been a great conversational piece. It has. That's There's no for doubt sure. about it. Yeah. So it's done that. I'm hoping that the Vogue readers know the difference between good photography versus not having it. My question for those uh, for the lady who posted it was, did she have a wedding photographer? That is a very good question. I think in the article, I'm not sure if she, I believe she's not married. Ah. Either, oh no, there was, there was actually like speculation, like people on the interwebs were saying like, uh, she's probably been married so many times. And anyway, stuff <laughs> yeah. that we don't really need to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> but um, there was speculation on it, but I don't think it actually stated it there. Yeah. Well, I think your point is fabulous. I mean, if you have someone who really is going to create art and create an experience there and help that day be a positive. I have pictures from my wedding. My father was a, a, a shot for National Geographic, shot bighorn sheep, and he did my wedding. Okay. So he had a strobe that kind of worked. And so <laughs> half the picture is lit. The other half is not. It's all done on transparencies. I have terrible pictures from my wedding. Should I have hired a photographer? Yes. It's <laughs> yeah. funny you mentioned that. I wish so bad that we had a decent shot of our wedding. Well, know? and see, we made the classic. I, I've been married for almost 14 years now, and we made the classic mistake of when we got married, we went the budget route. We spent like a thousand bucks to hire the cheapest person we could find. And every one of our photos are absolutely terrible. Yeah. And so, of course, we didn't get into this until like seven years ago. So this is five years after the fact. I'm like, maybe I should do this for a living. <laughs> but uh, I don't have good pictures myself, my wife and I. And it's one of those things that we look back on and it's one of our biggest regrets. We could have s spent money there, saved it in other places and actually had something to show our kids that we were proud of. Whereas I have pictures with me and like my wife with bubbles in the background. That's what I have. <laughs> bubbles. Blue bubbles. Uh, now I kind of want to see that actually. Are we going to put that up? On the it's been found somewhere. One of my buddies found this. He actually texted my wife and he's like, I need this picture. And she sent it to him. I think that's fabulous. Anyway. So there you have it. Vogue, you know, um, I think you're a little off the mark on this one. Just you kind of missed it. Yeah, just a little bit. So I think the, uh, the future of the industry is for photographers who can really bring art and experience that uh, to a wedding. And I think as we see that grow, as it is, and I think we'll see that uh, photographers are a pretty integral part of that process. So. so there you have it. I think Vogue's a little off base, but it's been great to have Pi here. It's great to have a wedding perspective here on the Slanted Lands because a lot of times our stuff is very commercial oriented. Pi and SLR Lounge does some fabulous wedding tutorials, uh, lighting tutorials, just how to make that day work. He alluded to a couple of them as we were talking here today. Check those out. It's really worth your time. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. The Slanderlands Business Coaching Class is back. People have been asking me, when are you going to do it again? Well, it's time. We're going to start March 3rd. Get on our free call. It's an hour and a half free call. We're going to teach you the daily routine for success, and then we're going to get ourselves started. We're going to grow our businesses. So it's back. The Slanderlands Business Coaching Class. Sign up for the free call today.